let's see here. Let's see how we're looking now. There we go. Okay. Looks like we're up and running now. Okay. I don't know what was going on. It's disappointing. Oh well. Alright, well we're back now and just for the sake of the YouTube re-upload I probably won't bother with that first one because I don't know when the screen went green and I don't know how long it stayed that way. People tried to tell me I thought it was just something weird going on with one of the programs because it started happening right when I switched to a different window but apparently my whole uh, stream kind of gave out on me but um, yeah, that's a, that's a bummer but um, not the not the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Oh well, it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, so for the sake of uh, re uh, rehashing out a uh, a YouTube intro here, uh, I'm Enviro Boy. It is March first, 2021. Uh, we are doing some uh, writing, streaming here. We have made a little bit of progress already. We're starting a new dungeon. We're working on the abandoned mine. Um, is what we're going to be working on here today, or what we have been working on, and and what I've sort of settled on so far is we have um, uh, we have uh, a I, I've decided we're going to go kind of um, kind of Lovecrafty in here with the way it's all set up. So we're we're we've got ourselves a flying horror going on uh, with our as our boss here. It's going to be something like this that just kind of flies through the mine shafts here um, is the idea that I have there. And so we kind of figured out the nature of what this is going to be like and what the the different sort of goals are going to be here. So yeah, so let's keep going here. We've got I've got about another hour left that I can stream and then I have to call it a session because I've got to do some I gotta finish assembling the cake I was baking and then uh, I gotta get that done by 3:30, because then I got something scheduled at 4 o'clock. So uh, we got we got an hour. I can get some good writing done in an hour. So we've kind of figured out the theme and the format of what it's going to be. So now the next thing I need to do is I need to finish finding the enemies that I want to do. So um, for our enemy for our challenge settings here I want to go ahead and copy these because these are the difficulties that I want to do here CR 1 8th 1 quarter and 1 half and it's just going to be easier if I copy and paste this over here and then fill in them blanks we'll do that do that there excuse me I'm burping up Pepsi gas <laughs> That's what I'm drinking. How about that? How about that for a Pepsi ad right there? Drink Pepsi. You'll burp up Pepsi gas. It's cherry Pepsi, no less. I mean, what else? What else? What more could you want out of life right there? I mean. <laughs> All right. So, um, so we want to find just as many nasty Lovecraftian baddies as we can at one eighth, one quarter, and one half challenge rating. So let's find ourselves a one eighth first. Filter monsters. Uh, I could probably narrow it down to doing like aberrations, um, you know. But I, I want to. I don't know. I like I like leaving it open if I can. Harpy's not quite what we're looking for. <laughs> a diseased giant rat might not be a bad option, honestly. It's a flump. Huh. That's an interesting one. I don't think that's what I'm feeling here. What else we got? What else we got? Giant rat. The diseased rat wouldn't be a bad option, honestly. It's not super thematic, but it just like it it it's always a safe bet for whatever setting we're doing here. Not quite. Cobalds, no, definitely not cobalds. Merfolk, we already used those. We gotta do something different. What's this? That's not a bad option right there. Fiend. Constructs we were discussing before before everything went belly up and I had to restart and 
I'm starting fresh at five minutes in rather than an hour and five minutes in. Uh, we were discussing the concept of filling a mine with like constructs and stuff, and I, it's a cool idea, um, but I'm not going to use it for this one. This one I want to go much more, uh, much more, like I say, much more Lovecraftian. Oh, that's a, uh, okay. Sturge, there's Vanth, Vanthamper. Oh, okay, it's a person. Mm -hmm. Young Kruthik. Oh, that wouldn't be a terrible option. Young Kruthik. It's either the Young Kruthik or the Diseased Rat. We're going to come back to it because what I want to do is I want to see what other things I've got available at the higher levels to see if the Kruthik would be properly thematic enough. An Abyssal Chicken? Ugh. Gosh, that's a wretched. That would work. That wouldn't be terrible. Bone Whelk? Ooh, that would be good. Ooh, that would be really good. I like the Bone Whelk. I like the Bone Whelk idea. Oh, that's cool. I might just I might just cut out the middleman of checking out everything else and just go with it. I don't know though. Yeah, Dretch isn't quite right. Giant frog. Just a giant frog sitting in a puddle in a mine. <laughs> That'd be the worst idea. No witherling. Could like eh. I don't know that gnolls would really be present on this island at all. I don't know that there'd even be historical context for there to be an undead knoll anywhere. I mean, truthfully, it doesn't really fit the theme, I don't think. Grimlock. No, Grimlock, maybe. Hmm. Kinku Clashtar. That's an underwater thing. <laughs> Mites and abyssal chickens just wandering around stabbing and biting people's ankles. Just do something like that. <laughs> Be kind of messed up that way. Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Needle blight. Ooh, that would be creepy. See a bunch of those things. Very, uh, very chucky <laughs> in nature, that one was. Rock gnome, rock gnome recluse. Skeletons, I mean, you could always use skeletons. It's the spider bait. Oh, it's a person. <laughs> I'm digging the song that's playing right now. What is this song? Yeah. Sea Adventures of Captain Rubber Ducky by James Flamestar. Oh, alright. I'll give James Flamestar a shout out. His titles are bizarre, but the music's solid. I'm feeling that. Troglodyte. <laughs> Veggie pygmy? Ugh, that's creepy. That's not right for this dungeon, but that is creepy. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go back. I'm going back with that that first one that I saw. Where was it? The bone. The bone whelk. I'm gonna stick with the bone whelk. Gosh, that thing is creepy. I love it. I love it, man. The place is just infested with bone whelks. I really like that. So let's see here. We gotta do soldiers. Boom. Space. Bone whelk. Zero one quarter, and then bone whelk. Where's its experience? Fifty experience. Fifty. Fifty XP. 
There we go. I dig that. I really dig that. Oh, my back is stiff. Oh. Mike definitely didn't pick that up, but oh, I felt it going up and down the back, that those little pops there. Oh, that's good stuff. Okay, um... So for our fodders, oh, that's right, yeah, fodders, I'm thinking the the Uncruthics or whatever they were called. Um, I'm going to find the one half, because it'd be, like, I kind of want to save those for a dungeon when it would be appropriate for me to use the adult ones, too. Because then I could do a don't ever talk to me or my son again moment with a uh, giant, uh, Reek looking monsters like from the from the prequels, from the Star Wars prequels there. Rovian witch. Ooh, she's just like a a true blue rit witch right there. It's the crackler. Oh, look at that thing. That thing is awesome. Let's see here. Ooh, that wouldn't be a bad one. Dolgrim, like there's just like a little, small little uh, society of Dolgrims or something like that. It's not the worst option. Gash the Knoll. Gash your Knoll. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm like, it's like I'm laughing to try and sell that. Like, oh no, it was it was definitely a joke. It was definitely a joke. You should laugh and find me funny. Please find me funny. Mm. I'm not finding anything that's striking me. <laughs> Jackalware? It would be really cool. One thing that I wouldn't mind doing is in, at some, in some place on this island, not on this island, in my world, just having a ware village. That's just like a village of a bunch of different werefolk. And they all are comfortable knowing that all of them will try to kill each other at, you know, when it's a full moon. And so it's like they, they all treat it like a no harm, no foul. They all just wake up the next morning with all kinds of extra scars. And they just sort of like, it's like it, they don't even need to apologize to anyone. It's all just understood like, yep, that's just what happens once every moon cycle. <laughs> These, oh, those guys are cool. Guys are really cool. I can't use them for this dungeon. They don't fit. Those guys are cool. I like them. Necromite. Ah. Uh. Nupperibo. Nuper. Nuperibo. Oh. Oh, that is wretched. Oh. Oh, no, thank you. Oh god, that was just disgusting. Ugh. It's another one. Orc nurtured one of one of what? Yertris. Psychic Grey Ooze. Yeesh, that throws a very different type of Lovecraftian in the mix. Still Lovecraftian, but mm. my Petsy's gone. Here's the Rust Monster. Give them rust monsters. Uh, I think he left. Yeah, the uh, Valexian who was here chatting with me. He asked about rust monsters. Uh, he had it right. They could face rust monster, but I don't know that. I don't know that that's quite what I want to use. It's it's pretty good. Sahuagin. Oh yeah, they're like water folk. That's that's not what I'm interested in. Skeletal alchemist. What is that? Ugh. Uh, winged thrall? No, not quite. Like I'm trying to find things that look more like they like you know, or chest burst burster in nature, just like that type of grotesquerie or something like that is what I'm interested in. War. Oh wait, what am I thinking? Warg is definitely not what I'm looking for. Aw, he's kind of cute. <laughs> they call him a monstrosity, but he's a little cute. He just looks, you know what he looks like? 
Looks like the the Shih Tzu that some of our family friends once had thing was all kinds of nasty in its old age. Lost most of its hair. A really strong underbite. <laughs> Breathed like that all the time. <laughs> Poor thing. Oh, it was a sweet dog, but oh gosh, it was. Uh, it was it was a contender in local uh, ugly dog competitions by the end there. That's for damn sure. Um, okay, so I haven't found too many things that are really what I'm looking for. Corby. Yeah, I liked the Dolgrim. I like the idea of there maybe being just like a small little camp of Dolgrims or something like that that have taken up residence in the mine. I like that. So we're going to go with the Dolgrims. Um, little aberrations. What are they? They're 100 XP. Dolgrim, 100 XP. What half? Come on. 100 XP. That. Dolgrim. There we go. Dolgrim. And so then, with that figured out, then I'm going to go back now to our 1 8th. 1 8th filter. Filter it. Filter it! Um. Hold on, it was over here, wasn't it? Yeah, the young crew thick. What we could do a whole bunch of young Kruthics just kind of skittering around. Just skitters everywhere. Then when you think it's done, it skitters again. Oh yeah, that's right. That wasn't quite what I was looking for. Not a whole lot that really fits what I'm looking for. So yeah, we're gonna go with the young Kruthik then. There's like a swarm of them. Like the, the, I mean, they're like the spider ants in Borderlands, right? Just kind of just like skid around in their little blade hands, just like chick, 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 everywhere. Like that's pretty that's pretty freaky. Yeah, we'll go with young Kruthiks. All right. Boo 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 boo. boo. Young. Crew thick. Hi, kitty. Young crew thick. I know. Hi, little kitten. What are you up to? She's like, what are you doing, Dad? I'm just sitting here writing and talking to yourself. I know, honey. But how is that different than any other day? Regardless of streaming status. Life is a sad, lonely process. Yeah, it is. I know. Sad, lonely process. Well, what can you do? I know, little girl. And they're thinking they're what, 25 XP for these guys? Yeah, 25 XP. Okay, so let's see here. So I know it's only 20 minutes into this particular uh, set of recording here, um, but I didn't really get my other break, my usual one hour break that I take. Um, due to having to troubleshoot some things. So I'm going to take uh, just a quick 5-10 minute break um, and then we'll be back for about you know another another half hour of writing and working on this stuff. I'll, I'll start building a uh, building an actual dungeon map is, is what we'll do for that last half hour. But I'm going to take a quick pause because i got to go check and see if my homemade jam is set and see if uh, the cakes are cooled enough that I can uh, assemble that cake uh, before going to the gym so that way I can just come home right afterwards and just maw down on that sucker there so um, so if there's anyone watching hang tight uh, if there's not anyone watching then they'll just come here and see the be right back schedule and then just be like oh he'll be right back um, so but yeah I will be right back in just a couple minutes
perception of self. My life is a tragic comedy. The cakes that I went to go check on did not come out. Or I should say turn out. They, uh... They stuck to the pans. Yep, the cakes, they ca they stuck to the pans hard. So when I tried to peel them off the, uh... The bottom of the pans, right? Because you got, you got the you got your cake tins where it's like an 8-inch round. And I use the spring form, so that way it's just easier to get them out. 
And when I tried to peel it off, just an entire layer came off and cracked the cakes, and they're all kinds of messed up and nasty, and I'm not going to use them. So, you know, and not a big deal, except that now I have a batch of buttercream frosting <laughs> and raspberry homemade jam that I got nothing to do with because I have these crappy cakes. So I guess on the way home today after uh, after going to the rock climbing gym, I guess I'll be, uh, I'll stop at the store and just buy, uh, spare stuff that I need to try, to try making our, uh, <laughs> our cakes again, and we'll just try making some fresh cake. I made the mistake, it's my own fault, really, I know I should do it differently, um, I made the mistake of following the instructions for the recipe, uh, like, I made the mistake of following the instructions as written in terms of, like, the time that it would take to for the cakes to bake and I shouldn't have done that you never do that you always pay attention to them and watch because they always I don't know what it is about my oven but it always always over bakes things and I should know better because it over bakes things like in that deceptive way where you think everything's fine because you look at the top and things are coming out okay but then when you when you look at the bottom bottoms and the sides it just it over bakes them right it, because the pans they heat up so fast I don't know what it is about my oven um, I don't think the temperatures off I think it's just something to do with the fact that it's an old crappy one and I'm using uh, metal tins and I just I gotta be more diligent about that I gotta not I gotta not fall for that trap like I always do it was a mistake So yeah, I goofed. I'll have to. I'll bake the cakes again. I'm not gonna use those crappy ones. I mean, I'm making a Victoria sandwich, right? So it's like it not. I don't have enough. You know, even if I had enough made, you don't use the frosting to cover the sides. You know, like crappy cakes, you can usually like if they stick a little bit. As long as the interior is most moist enough, you can get away with it because. Oh, hold on, my cat's sitting here. Now she's getting at it. Yeesh, man, I haven't been able to relax at all today. I've been doing chores and baking all day, and now my cat's going to be a little piece of poop. Just a little shithead when it gets... At any time after 2 o'clock, really, she starts throwing a fit because she wants to eat, even though she doesn't eat until, like, 5. So... Alright, that's okay. I'll try to not let myself be frustrated and let that impact what I'm working on here. Dang it. So frustrating. I hate when that happens. Alright. But we need to go ahead and find ourselves. And we're just going to put together a mine shaft here. Oh, shoot. We got. Oh, now my cat's just going to, like, storm up and down the hallway here. Dungeon generator. So, I'm going to go ahead and go through my. Uh, the Dark Barrow of the Gargoyle Queen. They do such elegant titles with this generator. Um, but that's okay. So let's see here. I want to, hmm, oh yeah, we just want to call it Abandoned Mine, Dungeon Level 3, Party Size 5. It doesn't really matter because I don't use the stuff that they fill it with, but I don't know. I just feel like it's prudent to do that. <laughs> Map style, standard, grid, square. Okay, now she's going to start thinking about tearing up the carpet rather than using her scratch posts. Dungeon layout. Dungeon layout, we can kind of just have it be whatever. I don't often use the cavernous one. I find that that the cavernous always seems like it would be really cool, but it's hard to make them seamless and functional and really makes sense 
Um, it's easier to just work with like a standard square room and hallway system. But, um, and then just describe it as cavernous. I find that that works much better in general. So, that's here. Peripheral egress. Yes. I'm going to put many, and then we'll just nix a couple of them, because I want, I need two at least. Room layout. Oops. Room layout. We always do complex, so that way the rooms are at least interesting. Room size, either medium or small, usually. Oh, uh, dungeon size. I always go for the custom. I always do my uh, 34 by 22, because I have a 36, or I have a 2 foot by 3 foot poster frame that I use for in-person grid maps and so if I do 34 by 22 that gives us a border around the edge um, so it's not a big deal and then yeah so it always will fit but will use up the space completely um, corridors I always like to do labyrinth remove dead ends we'll do some actually not nah none because this is a cave system and so um, let's see we want no stairs so it's a cave system and so that was used for a mine so I'd like there to be some dead ends that they go to just to kind of simulate you know they were mining where there was stuff to be mined and that's just what they did alright so let's construct this I'll take a look at it and see if it satisfies what I'm looking for there. Is this eight rooms? Usually I like to go with ten. But I think I can work with eight rooms. I think I can work with that. And then we've got two entrances, or three entrances. I actually like the idea of three entrances as well. Okay, I can work with this. I can work with this. Okay, so we're going to use this one. So the way I do it from here on out, so we set that up there, and then... Oh, I actually know what we need to do. I need to open up Dungeon Painter Studio here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the framework and then modify it. So that way I can make it sort of thematic and interesting and all that kind of goodness. Oh, excuse me. Man, I'm so bummed about those cakes. It's such a pain. It's not a big deal. You know, I'll be fine. I'll suck it up and it will it won't be a big deal. Gosh darn it. Um, you know, once I can... What? No, there's no plot there. Remove that. <laughs> remove this. Yeah, it won't be a big deal just to remake the cakes, but... Oh, check that out. I got a raid. <laughs> Neat. That's exciting. I don't know that I've ever been raided before. Sweet. <laughs> well, welcome everyone who's uh, who's storming the castle here. I'm working on uh, making a dungeon for my D&D uh, &D world here. And... Uh, just in time, uh, uh, I'm doing good, Mr. Bile. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm working on uh, we're we're working on making a dungeon here, and hopefully I'll I'll be interesting. We're making a dungeon, and I'm complaining about the fact that I suck at baking. I ruined a cake today. It was very tragic, and I'm genuinely really mad at myself for it. So you guys will hear all kinds of passive aggressive, self deprecating comments while we're working on. Uh, framing up the dungeon that I'm working on right now so that'll be uh, fun stuff for everyone and when I say for everyone I mean no one no one wants to hear me bitch it myself but that's what's happening today <laughs> um, oh I like this ground so yeah no I'm working on uh, we're working on writing uh, writing up a dungeon here um, and uh, what it is is uh, so so I've got uh, this whole big world that I've created we won't go into too many details about that for everyone. Um, instead, what we're going to do uh, is I'll just give you the, the quick and dirty lowdown of this one. It's an abandoned mine. Uh, it was once a mine that was uh, 
used for mining. I don't know. No one cares what it was used for. It was a mine, and it was abandoned, and it is now uh, infested with a bunch of uh, very Lovecraftian type of monstrosity animal creature things. Um, is is generally is like the the framework of what we're working with here, uh, and so I'm the next step in my process is I've kind of generated a random thing. Um, just have to rise to the occasion. Oh gosh, uh, I gotta. <laughs> what I gotta do, what I gotta do if I want to be better at baking is I gotta stop just letting myself set a timer for the things that I'm baking and going and checking because I know my oven is all kinds of persnickety about those types of things and it will overbake them just like it did this time so that way when I have a nice it's supposed to be a nice soft Victoria sponge you know for a Victoria sandwich and instead I end up with a borderline cookie because it gets so yeah it, it was sad it was sad dueling burr it was really sad I was uh, I was heartbroken while I was trying to ever so gently peel it off the pan <laughs> with a knife and it was just pitiful it's like crumbling and tearing and I don't know usually I'll try and salvage it but it's a it's a Victoria sponge I don't have the the buttercream that I would need to like cover the whole thing so there's no salvaging it there's there's no salvaging it uh, I mean I challenged myself on purpose but Ah, oh, gosh, it was, it was heartbreaking. I was so mad at myself. Um, <laughs> I gotta just, I gotta just let it go. I gotta let it go and move on with my life. <laughs> gotta, I got dungeons to make here. Is what I gotta focus on. Um, so yeah, so we're working on an abandoned mine that's filled with all kinds of, uh, all kinds of uh, nasty Lovecraftian creatures. So my process, what I always do, there's, you're damn right. There's always next time. And the next time is going to be tonight. When I get back, you know, I got I got an appointment at four, and on the way back, I'm stopping at the damn store, and I'm getting what I need, what I need, uh, and I am going to try that damn cake again. And uh, yeah, take the frustration out of my players, man. You have no idea. That's that's how I, that's how I express myself. Um, but yeah, so working on the, working on the dungeon here. You know, I gotta stop. I gotta not use the, the. Um, I gotta use the polygon tool here so yeah the dungeon what I do it with my process what I'm working on now and I always like to walk through my process so people if anyone's interested if there's any other like you know DMs who are interested in, in how I go about things um, I always try to explain it so the next step here is I copy essentially I essentially copy the map from what is randomly generated on the the donjon as I always pronounce it um, I think you're supposed to m pronounce it more like just dungeon. Um, but at any rate, I, I randomly generate something, uh, put it together. Oh, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. For, oh, two follows. I missed the one. I missed the follow from Mr. Bile, but uh, follows from Mr. Bile and Dueling Burr. I appreciate it, guys. Uh, glad to have you on board here. Um, oh, another follow. Oh, geez. Holy crap. <laughs> Shinotama, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, I copy up the 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 map here and then uh, another another follow you guys I'm never I'm never gonna get anything here because I'm just gonna be sitting here thanking you guys I'm never gonna get anything done what's this uh, well can some I don't know if I'm supposed to pronounce it that way <laughs> but yeah um, so so what I work on is I I copy the map here and then I go through and edit it because um, it's hard uh, uh, close enough. All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> I'm I'm glad I didn't butcher it too bad. Um, but yeah, I I it's it's a real challenge and it becomes really time consuming. Uh, from the cause, cause being a DM, uh, one of the biggest challenges is trying to budget time when I'm creating things because there's the tendency to always want to try and make things like perfectly, um, and if you try to do that from scratch. Uh, it's gonna take forever and when you have for me I've got two groups that I lead um, and I lead and, and like I, I do one every weekend so it's like I, I alternate the group so each group plays uh, twice a month and so on and so forth and so when you're trying to produce enough stuff to make sure you can keep up with two groups uh, you know and, and you're playing weekly um, you have to find ways to streamline the process and that's what this is for me like I would love to be able to sit here and just completely from my own imagination start from a blank slate 
for every dungeon um, but practically speaking it just doesn't work out that way uh, so instead I shamelessly steal other resources that exist um, <laughs> it's it's yeah it's it kind of boils down to just not reinventing the wheel if I don't have to um, and so so yeah so that this is what I'll do um, and I'll let me make sure I'm getting this all right here so I'll copy all of this down and then I'll make edits and fill it in how I see fit because see with this with this resource it's really handy if you really need a quick one it's got all of this information here that is um, that's uh, sort of pre-generated enemies and stuff like that so you can really have zero work if that's what you're after um, so uh, yeah, that's exactly it. You take shortcuts where you have to, and the the trick is to make sure just the narrative fits uh, sort of something that is meaningful to the players, and anything beyond that, you know, they're just not even going to really care. They're just going to be happy that they're playing. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I I will. It's the the dungeon website. It it provides just about everything you need. Um, so if I really wanted to, I could do it that way. Um, then the risk, the the risk is swinging the pendulum too much in the other direction, though. In that, then there's nothing personalized, and every dungeon just kind of becomes sort of uh, it just becomes your your standard. You know, every dungeon is like, oh, it's got trap doors and stuff, and so it's it's an awesome tool. Um, but for offering more narrative and role play type stuff, it's limiting. Um, so I usually end up finding that this is the best balance. So we've got all of our rooms. I always do the rooms first. Um, I just did that little bit of hallway there for a placeholder. And then you just go through the painstaking process of adding all of the whoops, all of the little corridors in there, wherever you need them. Um, and I let this process, I mean, there's so the the dungeon painter studio that I'm using, you can see over here on our list, we have all of the different chunks, which is super helpful because you can isolate different chunks and stuff like that. Um, but then the flip side is it becomes very cluttered. Um, as you can see already, it's it's becoming extremely cluttered. Um, what I'll do is you can end up then grouping things together. So I, I build so so what I'm working on is now just getting all the hallways in order gonna get those and then I'll group them into one big little chunklet um, that I'll just call like floor level and then from there I add walls if I need to doors if I need to there aren't gonna be any doors in this one um, because we are working on like a cave mine system uh, it wouldn't be wouldn't make much sense if there were a bunch of doors there I don't think that'd be fire fire marshal approved um, <laughs> if the mine was there Did they, would they have had OSHA back in medieval times I doubt it I doubt it, but that's why they all died at the age of 33. So, you know, fewer uh, <laughs> D and D, D and D OSHA. I should do that. I should just have like the main villain, basically. Like it would be, it would be like something out of Monty Python. You just make the main villain be the the safety marshals that come in and tell them, no, 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 you can't go in there. That's far too dangerous. We haven't had anyone to go in there and shore up the walls. <laughs> it would be an amazing organization. I should think about just having that in there as like a spoof organization for the sake of uh for the sake of lightening the mood whenever there's been, you know, a lot of drama in my games lately cuz you always it's you always got to find that balance of not oversaturating your players with too much drama and heavy-handed stuff. And so I always have my my go-to my go-to mood lightener <laughs> is um I have a, uh, I have a, a D100 which I call my jawbreaker. I don't have it out with. I don't have it out at the moment. I should. I'm sitting. I'm sitting here writing stuff that includes random tables. Why on earth don't I have a device? You know, my dice out here. Um, but I, I call it the jawbreaker. And what I do is uh, got that with a subplot with uh, my kind of drug mushroom sellers. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, Shinotama. It's exactly like that. My favorite is there was a group they had uh, a mage um, they, they had a mage who was really obsessed with like fire magic um, and so everything everything he did was like producing a fire and so as a mood lightener basically what we would do is during after at the conclusion of every fight uh 
if he used fire, it then we would roll the D100. And if he got a 100 on it, then it was canon. Uh, it was canon. All right, yeah, no problem, Dueling Burr. I appreciate you stopping by, man. I just the the fact that you're here here at all makes me happy. So glad to see you, and we'll we'll see you popping in and out. Um, but yeah, so it was canon in this world that every time he rolled a 100 uh, in those moments after using fire in a battle, uh, Smokey the Bear would come in and beat him up uh, if he if he lit too many fires, and it was like it was. Um, I don't know, part of me was like, this feels like a little much, you know, like using Smokey the Bear. It feels a little too non-immersive, but it was one of their favorite, uh, that group, it was one of their favorite things to see if Smokey the Bear would come up and, and beat the piss out of out of that guy. So, you know, having having ways to lighten the mood is good. And I feel like uh, having uh, a D&D &D OSHA guy come in and, and, and restrict them from exploring the sewers or something like that would be... Uh, I feel like that would that would be really good. I'll have to I'll have to think about utilizing that at some point. Ah, boy, yeah, boy, you guys rated it like the most boring time ever. While well, I'm just sitting here making hallways, super fun and interesting. Uh, let's see here. Need a hallway here. See, this is the tedious part when you got to get these tiny little one one bitlet, one one pixel, so to speak. Um, little doorways that just connect everything. This part is tedious, slow, and not interesting. <laughs> but it's a necessary part of the process. And and I and I've am determined to like always share the full extent of my process. <laughs> hey, you know, that's that's awesome, Mr. Bile. Like it's it's interesting. Like I'm I'm really pretty new to this whole streaming thing. Think this is boring. <laughs> well, I I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys uh, reassuring me. I'm 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 just giving this streaming thing a shot. Not even because I know anything about it but because I like watching streamers and I was like, I feel like that'd be fun to do. So I have no idea what I'm doing. Making it up completely as I go. It's been like one month I've been doing this. <laughs> so I appreciate the reassurance. That's that's helpful. Alright, so there we go. So we got the uh, so we got our baseline and now for me this is like the most satisfying part because we've got all of these chunks of ground and then boom group beautiful. And then we're just going to rename that to Floor Layer or something random like that. Oh, uh, nice. Okay, I, I feel that. I feel that, Mr. Bile. That's, that's, I, I do a lot of lore writing, too. Um, uh, not, I haven't really done as much on stream. Um, but I was kind of working on that because I, because I, I basically just stream whenever I'm working on, at least for this part of my stream, uh, I, I stream whatever I'm working on for my D&D &D world that I've created. Um, so I was actually working on a bit of lore last week. Um, I had the opportunity, I was writing, uh, uh, I was doing a bunch of stuff, I can pull up my notebook here, right, so this is where I keep all my stuff, I've got my big, overly broken up and organized OneNote uh, notebook here, but we were working on uh, a system because um, I, I I offer up I have like a homebrew system for uh, enchanting items um, so uh, <laughs> so uh, like you can for, for me I, I always feel like for okay I'm gonna I'm gonna let myself run off on a tangent here because I've got new people to talk to this about and I love this um, so I always feel like just offering people magical items is super anticlimactic. Like, people get excited about it, but I always feel bad because a lot of players like to come in with, like, this really strong vision of what their character looks like and how they act and how they fight and all that kind of stuff. And so when a player comes in with, like, you know the sword that their that their fighter uses, right? And they're, it's really special, or the or the club that their barbarian uses, or something like that. And there's like, I I like it when they can feel like there's like a special like a a special background ascribed to that item. 
And so I always think it's really lame when it's like immediately as soon as they find a plus one great sword or something like that, they ditch, you know, the, the sword forged by my grandfather. You know, they just like chuck it over their shoulders. It's like it's like in a Christmas story with the socks. They're just like, forget it. And they use the better one. So instead what I do is uh oh thanks Wandy. I appreciate the I appreciate the follow. Um but yeah, like I always feel like it's really lame to just sort of expect them to choose. So I instead what I do is I offer up a system that makes it possible, not easy, but possible for players to uh, enchant their items essentially with spells that exist, right? And so the, there's w what I do is I kind of... It's, it's a very gamey mechanic. It's pretty meta. Um, but, uh, yeah, like I... I give them these enchantment tokens that can there's a cattail about to show up there you guys go um honey you are right in the way i know you're hungry but it is not dinner time <laughs> so i give them these enchantment tokens that are it's a little token that's imbued with a spell so um oh uh, awesome shino shinotama i appreciate you stopping by though i i really appreciate it. it's been fun uh but yeah, so I give them these tokens so that they can enchant. And that's what I spent a whole bunch of time doing last week was just going through the spells and figuring out what it would look like to make them an enchantment item. So that way there's like some form of consistency and rules to it. Um, so it's not just like willy-nilly figuring out what the random item would or wouldn't be like. But, um, but yeah, no, I appreciate that. All of that to say... I appreciate that you're that you do a lot of uh, uh, lore writing, Mr. Bile, and I, I uh, dabble in it as well. Um, I mean, in terms of just mentally creating lore, I have a poop ton of it um, in my brain. Uh, but I tend to be more focused on the mechanics when I'm uh, actually writing stuff out, so that way I can just keep my focus on what I need for my players and stuff. Um, so okay, so we've got our. At any rate, we have our framework done. Actually, you know what? I need that backup just for another moment here. Um, so we've got our framework. And so now what we're going to do is, so I have, it's, it's a pre-made template that I made for myself that has all of the, uh, all of the rooms that I put in any dungeon. I, I utilize like a 10 room dungeon format. Um, it's, uh, it's a, uh, a, a sort of it, there's there's that commonly known and used uh five room dungeon format that's pretty popular i find that a little restrictive to only have five rooms per dungeon because um you know i like to have some wiggle room so there's a couple of different battles and stuff for people to have rather than just like one with enemies and stuff like that so i basically just double a lot of the stuff that's in there and i use a 10 room system and just to make it easier i have pre-made a uh a template for that so I can just go in and fill the blanks it's again it's all about streamlining streamlining and making sure things are all set um, in addition to that I also have pre decided upon difficulty settings settings uh, based on the levels so I just go up here to my little page where I've got the channel um, so so for saves and checks and this is just for things that are unexpected for the saves and checks um, a lot of stuff will be more difficult uh, if it's pre-planned and I have a reason for it, but oftentimes, you know, players will want to just like, oh, I'm going to investigate this thing, and you weren't really prepared, but I don't like saying no to my players. <laughs> you know, if they're trying to be creative and trying to be immersive, I try to make sure they're always there. So I just have, based on what level they are, a predetermined level of difficulty, so that way it can't ever be assumed that it was arbitrary whether I let them succeed or not. Right? I don't like it if like I don't like to just say yes you can make a roll just for the sake of allowing them making them feel like they have a choice right if if it's a no then no there's no roll if it's automatic yes don't roll and if you're gonna roll have it be meaningful have it be something that they can succeed at or can fail at and so that's why I you know have these sort of predetermined difficulty levels um, just so that way it's like there's always there's always a challenge level in my head for it. Um, additionally, we have our monsters here. I always just choose four monsters to put in. Um, ah, shoot, it would do that. Da 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 da. da. There we go. It's it's got to look right. Um, but I always choose just four monsters. 
um, monster types to have in a dungeon, and then you know based on the different channel the challenge ratings. So we've got our fodder, our soldiers, our leaders, and our boss. Um, and I don't and I do that a lot because I have the tendency to oversaturate a dungeon with types of monsters, so that you'll find like one of 20 or 30 different types of monsters and it's just because I think they're so cool and I love adding as many in as I can um, but uh, so, so I limit myself to just like these four types right and the concept is with the fodder it would take 10 of them to be an easy combat for five of whatever the dungeon level is so I'm working on a level three dungeon so 10 young Kruthix would be an easy battle for five level three players is the idea you know and soldiers are um, it's five so it would take five bone whelks to be an easy battle for five level three characters um, the leaders uh, oops, I forgot my little dash in there it's gotta look right um, so the little dolgrims it would take three dolgrims to make a an easy battle for five level threes Ah, Mr. Bile, adulting, that's the worst. That's that's gonna be me fairly soon, actually. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to sign off in the near future. But I appreciate you stopping by and I appreciate the raid, my friend. It's uh it really means a lot to me. It's it's fun. I, I'm glad that I've finding more people to share what I'm working on with. So uh you do you and uh we'll see you around. Um but yeah, so that's what the leaders are, and then the boss is just one just the boss alone would be an easy battle for five level three players. Um, and the reason I keep it at easy, even though it's a boss, is so that way there's some room that I can throw in some minions without it being, you know, a downright bloodbath on the players. Because it's, it's tempting to have just like a deadly combat with just the boss, but then you can't give him any lackeys. And I feel if it's a proper boss, he's not going to work in isolation most of the time, unless we're talking about, you know, an elder dragon or something like that, and, or an ancient dragon, in which case... You know, you can have level 20 players and they would still struggle with it, is sort of the idea. So so that's what's going on with the enemies there. Um, and then I also have my long rest risks. So if players are going to decide to take a long rest, uh, then there's going to be some risks involved with that. Unless they're utilizing one of the rooms I have in my, um, that I put in my dungeons is I, I have a safe room and that's a room where they can it's easy to fortify and if they find it and recognize it as a safe room they can fortify it and no matter what happens they'll be safe throughout the night um, but that way a long rest includes risk because if you don't include risk for a long rest players will abuse that like nobody's business they'll finish one battle and they'll be like oh I want all my spells back so I'm just gonna take a long rest and so if you don't offer up danger or challenge then that can be a problem and that's why I include things like half of the enemies killed will regenerate you know is 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 one of the risks um, one of the risks is wandering monsters will approach and I have predetermined wandering monster bands of creatures that will just come in and, and mess them up uh, there's un there is the chance that they'll have an uneventful night and then what I always do also is I do a you know a 10% chance of divine intervention which is something that I like to do to sort of offer backstory stuff for my players um, if they came if their character came in with a uh, with a deity of of choice that they worship then they're visited like in a dream or something like that by that deity who, who will then sort of prod them in a direction you know and I'll use that as a chance to say like you guys are you shouldn't be in this dungeon it's a it's a bad dungeon for you to be in or you know say like yep this is what you're doing or one of the things that I've done too is there's a player who is he, who had himself as a lawful good player uh, following a lawful good deity but then is with a band of pirates, you know, the rest of the players are pirates, and so they're just kind of pillaging and stuff, so I kind of ha used that as an opportunity at one point to have the deity come down and say, like, hey, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> you know, so I add stuff like that, or if the player has no backstory deity that they've already chosen, uh, that's when I sort of choose a deity for them, and usually what I do, just to add some interesting to it, because no one chooses an evil deity. Like, no one really does that. So what I'll do is I'll have an evil deity come in and try to corrupt them. Um, so, but that's, those are all of the long rest risks, and there's not much that needs to be done there. Um, 
but then we've got our, our rooms. So the first room of the 10 um, is a guarded entrance, right? I try to make sure that the entrance isn't necessarily easy to just walk through. Um, two through six, that's where we put all of our combats, right? So there's an easy, medium, difficult, deadly, and then boss combat. So there's five potential combat rooms aside from wandering monsters and stuff like that. Marker 7, I put a puzzle in there. Not necessarily explicitly a puzzle that like someone established and they need to solve the puzzle, but just some sort of challenge, some sort of skill challenge that they need to do. Hi, kitty. Um, I know, you're hungry, but it's not quite dinner time yet. You've got like a full hour to wait. I know. I know. You just go ahead and stand in front of the computer. <laughs> um, and then uh, Marker 8, I call that one the twist room. But really, all it is is it's it's a room that's a good free choice. I know there's a cat tail. <laughs> she's so she's such a punk, this cat. Um, <laughs> let's see here. So no, this template is something that I put together, um, and I've considered finding a, a way to. Uh, disseminate it so that other people can utilize it because I have no problem with other people utilizing it um, and uh, but but I have yet to figure out exactly what would be a good way for me to do it based on the resources I have um, but it's definitely something that I'm interested that, that I would be willing to share and it's definitely something uh, that I can look into figuring out if there's just like maybe I'll just put together a Dropbox or something Patreon, I you know I I'd, I'd be willing to to think about that type of stuff. Um, I just I I haven't thought about any of that. I've been I've been streaming for like less than a month at this stage, so I just I it hasn't crossed my mind. Um, I mean I'm more than happy to share it. I think just sharing the the hobby with people is an excellent idea. So I mean if there's demand for that, I can start looking into it. It's it it, it might take me a couple weeks to figure it out because I still got a day job that I you know do aside from from all this. This is more of a hobby for me, but um, yeah, yeah, if that's if that's what people are interested in, I can absolutely start figuring out ways to to share my stuff because I I love the idea of more people getting involved in this, and I love the idea of there being more DMs in the world. Um, and the reason I love that idea is because I have been a DM for the better part of a decade, and in that period, I have actually been able to just play maybe like five times. Because once word gets out that you're a DM, everyone wants you to DM so that they can play. No one, like DMs are in such high demand in the D and D world. So, um, no, yeah, I'll I'll um, I'll think about figuring out a way to, to start sharing some of this stuff, some of these templates. I mean, at the very least, probably what I could do is, um, you know, set up a, some sort of like, I don't know, a, account system or, you know, just through through Twitch of people, you know, I've got a YouTube channel. If people just message me, I can probably just make like Word document versions of it that you can then copy and paste. Um, so <laughs> became the DM by pulling the short straw. That's a real bummer right there cuz then you cuz not only do you have to make the the game on the fly, you have to learn how to make the game on the fly. Um gosh, I feel you. That's a that's a tough situation to be in for sure. For sure. Yeah, I'll look into I'll look into figuring out what would be a good way for me to for me to share some of the stuff cuz I have no problems with sharing all the stuff I produce. I'm not I'm not doing this trying to trying to copyright things, you know. I'm doing this because it's a cool hobby. I love it, and I think it benefits everyone involved in the hobby if we share ideas and bounce ideas off of each other. Um, so yeah, I will definitely look into that. I'll look into figuring out a way to do that if I can just like you know create uh, just a little repository somewhere, um, like a Dropbox or something that I can just link on my Twitch page or something like that, and people can take it if they if they want. I, you know, I don't really have a problem with that. Um, like I say, I can maybe just like make word documents of it so that people can copy and paste and use the text however they want. Um, oops, did not mean to type that there. Um, but yeah, so these are the rooms. I'm just running down the rooms and what I'm going to do to finish up the stream here, I'll finish explaining all my rooms and I'm going to plop down the rooms on the map so that way starting up next, uh, next time I stream, I can uh, start just fleshing out the rooms. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't take too long to flesh them out. It just takes more time than I have today. Um, but yeah, so we have the the marker eight, which is like the twist room. And usually, what I'll do with that is I put that in there just to be a free for all room. Sometimes I'll put prisoners there, and that's what I'm going to do in this one. There's going to be some prisoners that are being held in this mine as if it were a dungeon, because this this dungeon exists on an island that is uh, um, sort of the overlord of this is uh, a a cyclops that likes to hunt. 
people um, and so sometimes he captures people and puts them in the mine just as like a dungeon because he thinks it's funny um, it's it's kind of a twisted island that I've created here um, it's kind of is disturbing to me that I came up with it but we're not going to investigate that psychology too closely not today um, so yeah, but but it, it can be anything that I want. Sometimes I'll put an extra combat in there or an extra puzzle if that's what I see fit. Sometimes it'll just be an extra empty room or something like that, or a room that I use to throw in a whole lot of um, a whole lot of lore and stuff like that if I want to do that backstory for people. Um, so so it's it's really just a catch-all room. Um, marker nine, that's the reward. That's where I put whatever the treasure hoard is. I mean, players can pick up a little bit, but I don't like relying on looting the corpses uh, for people to get their um, rewards because I just I think it breaks immersion, and I think it's just not all that realistic to just say like you find seven hundred gold in this random soldier's pocket. This zombie was carrying eighteen gold. Like it just, you know, people don't. I like the average person doesn't walk around with two or three hundred bucks in cash in their wallet right why would anyone do that so um so so i offer up instead like a treasure room to mitigate that a little bit and still give them a, a reward and also to sort of give a clear like mission complete signal for players like they like knowing that like hey we found the big thing that exists in this dungeon you know, so so I offer up the reward, and it's usually money, or at least includes money. But a lot of times, it can also be information. Um, the dungeon that they just finished up, uh, the the reward was finding a book, um, and the book had information that they were looking for. And so that's you know that's the treasure, that's the reward. So I just make sure that the that there's a room that's like distinctly you found the reward, you know what you were going after, you got it and now you can feel comfortable leaving because you know you found mostly what you're looking for um, and then room 10 like I say that just tends to be a safe room so we're gonna plop down some of these rooms here uh, so first our, our sort of guarded entrance now now here's where things get interesting um, because there's a couple different entrances here and one of these leads to another dungeon and I want that one to be a back way in and there's there's actually three openings here and I'm gonna keep them because I want there to be three back doors here. Um, I need to go to my proper tool here. Is it, no, it's not that one. Um, I need to go to that one, and then we got to get our uh, objects tool up here. So then we can do markers numeric. So our guarded entrance is going to be over here. That's where our guarded entrance is. Because to this mine, what I have in mind, what I have in mind, <laughs> I see what I did there. Um, <laughs> but we have this uh, this entrance here, and so up here is going to be the main sort of mine shaft entrance, right? And like this hallway, I'm thinking is almost going to be like just like a hill that descends down into the rest of the mine shaft, right? Um, and so it just goes down, and then we enter our mine here. And so I I want to make that sort of the the guarded entrance, so to speak. Um, I haven't exactly figured out how I'm going to do it. It's probably going to be something to the effect of there's a cart that makes it easier to go up and down the hill that's actually like all kinds of busted so they either have to figure out how to safely traverse uh, a sl uh, like a, a deeply sl sloped gr so like floor that like maybe the stairs are all busted up and something like that and then the you know they've got a rail car and maybe I'll just make it so that if they fail a check or something like that it goes careening down and throws them into the wall and whoever's in the front of the cart gets hurt or something like that just do small little things like that just to batter them as they go through the dungeon like you don't want to have it all be an all or nothing room with the combat in terms of them feeling like they're facing adversity you l I love throwing in little bits of damage here and they're like oh yeah you like you 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 open that door and it was trapped and so you take you know 10 poison damage if you throw little things like that that can get them in trouble because if their players aren't paying attention that stuff will creep up and it'll add up on them and and they'll suddenly be in trouble um, so the guard entrance is going to go there um, and I always fill in everything other than the the combats the the easy medium hard and deadly combats that are just the standard ones I always do those ones last um, because those can just fill in wherever you don't need them um, for our boss though so number six is our boss room I want to put that here 
I want a nice big open room because we're doing a flying horror. So it's going to be something that like needs some room to move around. So I want to use one of these nice big rooms. And I like this one because it only has one entrance. So the players can go in there and it's possible that they get themselves trapped in there with the, with the monster if it goes down and guards the entrance. So I, I, I like this one. I, I had pegged that one pretty early on as being the, the boss one. And the thing that's also fun about that is if they go through these side entrances, if they try to be all clever and sneaky and going through these side entrances, there's a good chance that they will, as the first room they visit, accidentally get themselves suddenly facing the boss of this, of this dungeon. Um, so I, I like putting that one there. Um, for a puzzle here. So this can be kind of arbitrary here where the puzzle goes, so to speak. Um, and I'm just thinking, I'm thinking the puzzle, maybe a good way to do it will be in here. And maybe the puzzle is just that in here, like this is a central hub. Is one entrance intentional or did you forget the second entrance of the room right of it? Oh, you're right. There is one there. Um, uh, it was unintentional, but I'm going to leave it because I like it how it is. <laughs> Good eye there. Good eye. Yeah, no, I didn't even notice that um, when I was putting it all together. But I'm going to I'm gonna leave it as is because I think it works out well. <laughs> um, <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone. It was on purpose. <laughs> uh, but for the puzzle, I think I'm going to put the puzzle room here. Just because I'm looking at this room and I'm seeing there's a lot of entrances, so this can serve as a good hub. And what my thought is, if we've got a mine going in here, it'd be cool if like part of this room caved in and fell. So there's like a big pit here, and the puzzle is, in order to use this sort of centralized hub that connects a lot of rooms, they have to figure out a way to safely traverse the fact that most of the floor is gone, um, is what I'm thinking. Now for our twist room, that can just be anything. That's that's going to be the room where the Cyclops has sort of put the prisoners. I'm thinking actually I'm just going to put that right there at the f main entrance, right? Because if they're going in the main entrance and they go in there, th that's the first room they're going to be. And I think that would make sense because if we're talking about a Cyclops that's captured a couple people and just wants to chain them up, He's just, he, he's a simple-minded asshole. He's not, like, thinking about trying to make some sort of labyrinth. He's just like, hey, I'll put them in the cave, and then they'll be sad and hungry down there. And so he just walks down, finds the first room, and chains him up. Um, so I'm thinking that's where we're going to put the, the, the victims there. Um, so for nine, for our reward room, so I'm thinking... There's kind of two options that I'm thinking of for the reward room. I'm thinking we can either put it right here so they can sort of like accidentally find the reward early and not face everything and therefore not get all of the experience, right? And make them decide if they want to meta the, the situation and, and explore deeply. Um, and we can put that there. Or alternatively, we could put it up here in this corner, um, kind of removed into the side. But I actually think... No, you know what? We're going to put it right up there. We're going to put it removed to the side, and we're going to make it so that these entrances here, when, when I'm putting down the detail, that these entrances are somehow disguised, right? Because the, the treasure that they're looking for, the treasure that exists in this one, uh, is it, it's explicitly a treasure. Um, a guy, an ancient warlord who was going through and you know amassing wealth during a worldwide conquest was hiding bits of his wealth so that way wherever he was in the world he could have like piles of gold to go upon um, you know when he needed to pay soldiers to be part of his army or something like that um, and so he was explicitly trying to hide a treasure it's, 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 it's this is explicitly buried treasure for a group of players that want to be pirates like that's that's what I'm keeping in mind here so I'm gonna put that up there because then what I want to do is I'm gonna put our safe room right here um, and this is a good safe room because um, because of my 100% intentional omission of a of a hallway wink wink uh, <laughs> this room also only has one entrance to it which means it's gonna be a very easy one for them to fortify and I'm thinking probably what we can do is we can fill this room with a bunch of you know spare wood and and timber that would have normally been used to fortify the different mine shafts and stuff 
and there's just a bunch of spare stuff there like that that they can use to easily build a barricade and fortify their room to sleep in for the night. Um, so that's what we're going to do there, which means that now we can just sort of arbitrarily pace all, uh, space out all of our all of our combats. So usually what I do is I just like start at the closest room and then work my way back, you know, in terms of ascending difficulty. So it's like they they sort of have a progressive overload of of combat that they have to go through. So these rooms are all taken these three, so we put the easy one there, the difficult, the sub, the semi-difficult, the really difficult. And then now we're stuck in a situation where I don't actually have 10 rooms. And I did notice that that was I I I will say that one was intentional. What I want to do is oh, you know, that could be a good use. So here's what I'm thinking though. That could be a good use right here. We can just have like a little hovel go there because the difficult combat is going to have a lot of, um, that's where we're going to use our little colony of, where'd they go? Of our Dolgrims. It's a little colony of Dolgrims because they were like these, these, you know, semi-sentient creatures that are living down here. We can just have the difficult battle be their hive so to speak you know if you stumble upon the entrance to their hive or something like that you gotta fight them and so maybe that's what that extra little entrance is and we can just sort of if it becomes relevant and they would try to like dig through it and get through to to see what they had there they'll find there's nothing special there it's just this little hovel for these cave, cave dwelling cave dwelling creatures that live there so we'll throw that right there and with that I think we've got ourselves a solid framework for finishing up and adding detail. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to group these together. I'm going to call these room numbers. So we'll leave that there. And so usually as I complete different segments of the dungeon, right? So we did our floor layer. I'm not worrying about walls because it's all a cave. Normally I would put up walls and doors, but it's all a cave system. It's not going to have those. Um, but what I do is as I finish a layer, I then group the layers so that I always just have like one layer and I start start with the like the most basic, most foundational, and then I add detail on top of it. So that way things are always visible because the, these layers are relevant to what's on top and what you can see as you can see there. Um, the room numbers, however, I always keep separate because ultimately those are going to be on top, but I need them there before I put everything else so that way I know where to put everything else. Um, so that's just a little trick I put there and I only explain it so that way if other people are going to try using this tool they can sort of learn the tips that I had to figure out on my own because it's hard to find um, it's, it's hard to find a lot of detailed how-to's for DM production like most people when they when they make stuff it's much more conceptual in nature there's not a whole lot of step-by-step -step how to's um, so I'm, I'm trying to offer up a little bit of the step-by-step -step stuff for people to pick up on but um, so yeah that gives us uh, that gives us a good framework um, and before I forget to do it we are going to save this um, I'm gonna call this a abandoned mine that's all we got to do. We got to save it, save our work. I was actually being very naughty and not saving in the middle of the process like I should have been doing. Um, but yeah, so we've got ourselves a uh, a solid start for a dungeon here. And I'm pleased with what we've got here so far. I think this will end up being good. Um, but with that, I'm looking at the clock. Um, I've gone actually uh, about 25 minutes longer than I responsibly should have, but I, I wanted to finish this up. Um, and it doesn't matter. Um, because I can just do the stuff I was going to do before my 4 o'clock. Um, I can just do that stuff afterwards because I have nothing else going on this evening. So, uh, But yeah, so there we go. There's there's a good start. Um, I'm happy with what we've got. And I'm happy with, uh, with uh, how things transpired with getting some other people on board that are interested in what I'm doing. Um, this is, uh, it was fun seeing the, the big influx of people who are interested in, and share this hobby because not only uh is it fun to yeah i mean you know there's something 
there's like a visceral excitement that shows up when suddenly you have people you know clicking the follow button and stuff like that like there's no doubt about it it's like when you win even just like a two dollar scratch off lotto ticket right you know even when you just win the ten dollar thing it's there's something fun about that but the more exciting thing to me about that is I now know a bunch of other people who it sounds like stream their own stuff in this regard uh, and as someone who is streaming D&D writing uh, I am excited to learn about other people who do the same that I can then watch when I need a break from streaming myself so um, at any rate uh, yeah this has been fun and I'm glad that we got some people stopping by it's exciting uh, and I dig it um, for the rest of this week uh, I, I do try to stream every day of the week in the afternoons. Uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays are when I'm doing my writing. Uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, I do some video game streaming. Right now I am playing through Borderlands, the first one, um, which has been fun. Uh, and I try to do it roughly around noon at my time. Uh, the problem is throughout the week, uh, I am sort of, that, that afternoon period does sort of compete a little bit with my day job. Uh, depending on if I have meetings uh, scheduled for my day job, I might not be able to. And so if I'm remembering properly for this week, um, I am green light a go streaming uh, at roughly the same time uh, tomorrow for sure, uh, probably Wednesday also. But I think Thursday and Friday are toss-ups because I'm pretty sure I have meetings scheduled those days. Um, I plan to put up a schedule on my Twitch page, um, but I have to first widgets work <laughs> so I'm trying to figure that out um, I will be putting up a schedule either way I do intend to stream a little bit on every day this week around this time but the details about specifically which time <laughs> I don't know I don't know it's just kind of when we have to or when I when I have the time to um, you know uh, but it's you know this is this is my side hustle so to speak it's um, so so I, I allow myself the, a bit of flexibility um, but yeah, I th that's what's coming up. Uh, so tomorrow, if you're interested in watching me play some Borderlands, uh, I'll be streaming streaming that. Um, the replay of this will pop up on uh, Twitch, so if you want to go back and see what I was working on earlier, you can do that. Um, if uh, you know, or if it's easier for for watching, I do also have a YouTube channel that I that I upload all of these to, uh, and it will be there before the evening is done. So, um, and you can see the backlog of other stuff that I've worked on so far too. Uh, a lot of similar stuff like to this in my writing streams. So, um, so yeah, I think that's everything. I think that's all I got in terms of announcements. Um, so again, thank you so much to everyone who stopped by. I appreciate it. I like, yeah, a whole lot of, whole lot of follows today. That's exciting. Uh, that's fun stuff. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm glad you found it too, man. I'm I'm glad you're I'm glad you're on board. I'm glad you're interested, and I I hope I can help you out. And like I say, I'll look into seeing ways that I can uh, sort of share uh, my templates and stuff that I work on. I think that's a great idea. Um, I really want to share it and make sure that all of the resources I use are available to everyone. Because like I say, the more people playing D and D and learning how to do this stuff, the better for all of us. So, um, so yeah. Thanks again. Thanks a million. Uh, go out there. Be good, spread some good in this world, and we will uh, catch you all next time. Bye. Where's the end stream button? There it is.